knows the, the guy. The big guy. What do they call him? The big guy. They call him everything but the S-word. The word. real guy. Why can they not the call him shit? Or... Oh, sorry. Because <laughs> it's on the Tiffany Network, that's mother... That's got nothing to do with it, does it? Oh, this was my favorite part. Yeah. When I saw him on there. Oh, and also, was it... Helen Slater was the mo- stepmom, or the adopted mom, yeah. Wow, they're pulling in everybody for the cameos. Rad. So Helen Slater was the mom? Yeah, the she adopted was mom. Kins. So she was Mrs. Sylvia Danvers. Danvers. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I, I mean, I yeah, I, I thought I that was a way her. bigger deal than Dean Kane. I don't know who Dean Kane is. But Helen Slater was fudging Supergirl in a terrible movie. Yeah, you know who Dean Kane is. Come on. He is Superman. Hey, you take that back. He's like, uh, like, what's his face to you? Um, Do not compare the two, please. The guy from Superman Returns. Oh, Brandon Ralph, okay. Yeah, he's like Brandon Ralph to you, where he's like, she, he was born to play Superman. But yeah, see, and I mean, it was a super short little cameo, but I thought it was great. Well, okay. I, I don't imagine that it's a super short little cameo. I imagine oh, yeah, he'll probably that we will flash back there. to her childhood over and over and over again. Because that's fodder for stories. In the same way that what happened to Oliver on the island was fodder for stories for the entire first season of, <laughs> of Arrow. For every season. That's all Oh, is it do. every they season? They just keep oh, going Lord, back to really? this island forever. It's like he was there for half a lifetime. Okay, I will. This is that gets my go. There, I said it. Happy now? Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. Welcome to another episode of That Gets My Goat. Yes, you will believe a podcast can fly straight down the crapper. That's right, which we plan to do before this is over. We're going to talk Supergirl. Now, Supergirl came out, what, yesterday was when uh, it aired? Is that what we're going with? Do you want to do yesterday or do you want to do today? Today! It came out to... I, I'm... It's really unlikely that I post this on time, though. Okay, three months ago, Supergirl <laughs> premiered. And it's already been canceled. But guys, we wanted to talk about the pilot episode of Supergirl. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where to start. Let me just say, I got to see it on the big screen at San Diego Comic-Con. This, uh, with, like, the cast and crew. And uh, maybe it's a different experience. I, I mean, obviously, going to see a movie... Versus seeing it at home on the television is a different experience because you hear people clap or laugh or fart, and uh, you know it, it's, the it's worst a communal part experience because your sense of smell and your sense of taste are connected, and so when they fart, anyway. Sorry, that's that's another Neither story. Neither here nor. Yeah. Do um, uh, you, you want to give the circumstances of how yeah, you saw it? Was, it? I, I, I saw it not on the big screen. I saw it on the small screen through. Um, some nefarious means that I will not speak of. Well, you had to do it for the podcast. It was for the greater good. That's right. It was for the greater good. The greater good. That's right. With great power comes great responsibility, and I therefore had the responsibility to see this. I didn't want to. I was. I had to. He didn't want to. He took one for the team. That's folks. right. That's how much he likes you, <laughs> kind <laughs> sir or madame, who's actually listening to that. Gets my goat. That's right. I, I, I thought that it would be cool to record this like right before the show began so that everybody would be like, wow, hey, I'm, I watched that yesterday and now I listen to the podcast. But you wisely overrode me and said, there's no way we will remember anything about the show yeah. if the, we wait that long. The sad thing is we probably already don't remember yeah. a lot of it. We should have We ran out of time it. last week. Um, but anyways, we're going we're gonna to forge ahead and hopefully have something worthwhile to talk about. Uh, we'll see if our memories combining them and be like, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, didn't this, didn't, oh. Uh, maybe yeah. we'll be able to come up with uh, a worthwhile thing here for you. But but uh, also, you know, listen to the show if you just watched the show. But, like, if you haven't, then go watch it real quick on, like, Hulu or whatever. Or if you have no interest, back. if you don't want to watch the show, maybe this will make you give it a chance. I I don't know. Or there's, not. There's Maybe basic... it'll make you not want to give it a chance. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. That's very true. Now, there's two th- main things that I want to say before this episode is over. So once we get done, just remind me to make sure that I that, that I said the two things. Okay. Um, but yeah, just a, a tiny bit of background. This is a show that's being made by Warner Brothers Television. 
the same people that make the Flash, that make Arrow, and make Legends of Tomorrow, which I guess doesn't happen until next year, uh, are are making this show. You know, same executive producers, Greg Berlanti, the the co-creator of Dawson's Creek, is is also in charge of this, and he's he's sort of the showrunner or a showrunner uh, of uh, of this DC television family of shows and yeah, this is the dc television universe yeah and televisionical what? cinematic television it is there's not a word like that is there like cinematic that goes with television i i don't tell us telekinetic yes oh that's pretty actually <laughs> um so anyhow just yeah it's made by the same people but it is for the CBS television network here in America, uh, which is the Tiffany Network, and, and they got that name because they uh, they were classier than the other networks. You know, we don't appeal to the lowest common denominator. Our shows are higher quality. That was something that they started to say back in the 50s and the 60s, the Tiffany Network. Uh, but it sort of still hung on all these years later uh, to the point where here we are in 2015 and CBS is the old person network. <laughs> I just want to get that out of the way, but because it's on CBS, it's it's not really as interrelated with the other shows, yeah. uh, which is to its detriment. There shan't be uh, cameos of people from the other shows or crossover shows or any of that because... As far as we know, at this point, there hasn't been. Maybe CBS will be like, oh shoot, tons of people watch The Flash, not tons of people watch Supergirl. Can you guys make some changes? It's okay if you guys have those guests from shows that people actually watch come on here. That, it's not outside the realm of possibility. Yeah, it could be that. possible. Although um, a Tiffany Network type network will probably just say, tons of people watch The Flash, not tons of people watch Supergirl. Cancel Supergirl, please. Yeah, and, and, and the joke I made about, you know, it's probably been canceled three months ago. It's sort of a joke, but it might not be. I'm, I don't think CBS is the place for this show. Yeah, but, I wonder... If it gets canceled, if uh, CW will just be like, oh, whoa, 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 no, uh, don't throw that away. Wait, that, that's still good. Uh, yeah, we'll just a, wash it off. A and really it... good chance that that would happen. I, I, yeah. And then all of a sudden it'll come alive because then it'll be part of the universe. Anyways, go on. Oh, but no, no, no. I just, I just wanted to give that little bit of background about it. But if it's okay for me to say the first of the two things that I had to say, just right here at the very beginning, I watched it and I enjoyed it, but I, at the whole time I realized that I was not the target audience for this show. I realized that this this show was not made for me, uh, and, and, I, and that sort of hampered my enjoyment of the show, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, it's like, it's okay if you don't like this and this and this. It's not made for you. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Who would you say is the target audience? 14-year-old girl. Okay. T target demographic is probably 11 to 18 female. And and that's fine. It's a show called Supergirl. Of course it's going to be made for teen girls or young girls or tween girls. Um, but as a father of several of those, do you disagree? No, I think that's probably about right. Okay. Um... I don't know why, but it makes me think a lot of Ugly Betty. Maybe it's just Callista Flockhart. Was or... she on that as well? No. Oh. But just that kind of dynamic of, you know, the the, the way the, the newspaper... It is a newspaper? Is it a magazine? Or what is it that she works for? It's, it's a Daily Planet, so it's, it's a newspaper. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, the, just the way it is and how Callista Flockhart, the boss, is all like... Oh my gosh, I gotta have my own elevator and I'm so prissy and stuck up. -y. It seems, and then, uh, Cal or Calist, uh, Cara, Cara, how do you say her name, anyways? Is it Cara or Cara? I say Cara. I, I don't know, I don't care what anybody else says. She goes by, oh, yeah, her name's Linda. Linda, Linda Danvers. Danvers on there. and So she seems like the kind of ugly Betty character where she's being shat upon by everybody else. Here, do my dirty work. And by the way, I won't appreciate you for it. Uh, you get that a lot. I mean, it's a, I don't know, the devil wears Prada or 
not that I saw that to even know no, what I, it's like, but I, got I assume... a huge Devil Wears Prada vibe from the yeah, show. I've never watched Ugly Betty, and so Devil Wears Prada is what I thought of. Okay, I never watched Devil Wears Prada, but I get the kind of idea of what it's like, and... Ugly Betty, my wife did watch, and I saw some of, but not a lot. And but just I wouldn't that. be surprised if Callista Flockhart hadn't watched Devil Wears Prada eight or nine times, studying Meryl Streep's performance, so that she would know how to do Cat Grant uh, in, in this way. Yeah, so it's uh, it's got a lot of that kind of appeal to it. Um, it. It feels like that kind of a show, which I think was probably also teenage girls to younger women was the target demographic which again yeah i mean it's cool it's, it's fine not... yeah supergirl is a creation for for girls to look up to a female superman not i i don't think it was made for middle-aged horny men to ogle and so the fact that a middle-aged horny man was able to enjoy it uh at all uh, is a testament to the fact that they at least tried to make it more of a universal show. But yeah, time and time again, I was reminded, it's like, oh, you know, it was, when Dawson's Creek came out in the late 90s, I, I always felt guilty. You didn't want to wait for your life to be over? I didn't. <laughs> uh, but now I, 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 oh, I cannot wait for my life. Wait, <laughs> I want my life. Never mind. Uh, I, I would watch that, but it's, I would always feel guilty about watching it because I knew it was not made for me. And here I am all these years later, Watching a show that's made for that exact same audience. Watching a show called Super Dawson's Creek. Super Dawson's Creek. And that's a, that's a cool thing about high school girls. Is every year I get older, every year they stay the same age. And that's how I feel. I feel like that dirty, <laughs> perverted guy who's just like, I could be her daddy <laughs> in more than one way. Uh, I, I watched it. I enjoyed it. I feel guilty about the parts that I did. Uh -huh. uh, but let's talk a tiny bit about the show Supergirl, just in case people don't know. Uh, she is Kal-El, Superman's cousin. His older cousin, who is sent in another rocket ship to be his babysitter, because he's baby Kal-El. Uh, I believe she was about 12 or 13 years old when Krypton is destroyed, and she is sent to to watch over him, to help him on this new world. But there's a problem, and this is comic continuity too, not just the show, but there's a problem, and she gets delayed, and Superman ends up here and grows up his whole life before she ever makes it. So now he is older than her. She's the Supergirl, whereas he is a Superman. And they did a bunch of little fudges from the comics so that it would be... It would, so it would serve the story more, and so it would also serve their demographic more. Uh, for example, it was uh, Kara's mother, who was the brilliant Kryptonian scientist that created the uh, the ship that would send her to safety. And it was Kara's mother who imprisoned the Phantom Zone villains who will now swear vengeance upon their jailer, and if not their jailer, then uh, her heirs. Uh, anyhow, she gets here, and somebody, who we never actually see, welcomes her to Earth and takes her to this place. Is it, was it a farm? Let's say it was the Kent farm, by, where the Danvers live, and Ma and Pa weird. Danvers... Why do the Danvers live in the Kent farm? I don't know. I, but... I, well, the Kents were evicted. <laughs> uh, but Ma and Pa Danvers raise Kara to be their own, but they already had a daughter. See, that's the difference between Ma and Pa Kent, I guess. They already had a daughter, and uh, this daughter uh, is played by Shiloh Lee, who I once had a crush on, but when I saw her on the panel, I was like, oh, time has been unkind. Maybe I should cut that out. Ooh, that seems mean. <laughs> um, the, she is raised by the, the, the Danverses to hide her powers, to not show that she is a uh, superhuman, or that, well, she's an alien, that, sh that she is a supergirl, does Pa Danvers uh, get killed in a cyclone just to prove his point that he should save the dog and not her? I sure hope so. But no, I, I imagine <laughs> we'll find out uh, through flashbacks. But I, well, I've only seen the pilot at this point, and I, I believe you've only seen it as well. But anyhow, now she's a grown woman, and she's living in... 
you remember what the name of the city was? Oh, I don't. It's another one of those freaking. It was made DC up, yeah. Cities. Um, They're all something city. It's probably Coast City or uh, Central that's City that's or uh, Big City. There town. you go. Let's just call it Big City. She's in New York because all of the cities are New York. Um, yes. And somehow there's dozens of different New Yorks all across the United States with different lame names. Well, that's better than Superman v. Batman, where Metropolis and Gotham City are both New York and both next to each other. Yeah, across the bay. But anyhow, uh, as, a, as an adult on this show, uh, she realizes that she can make a difference with her powers uh, and save some lives. And at the same time, she can save her job and the jobs of a lot of other people that work at the newspaper because circulation is down. And unlike in Metropolis, where they have a colorful hero that sells newspapers, uh, Big City doesn't. <laughs> and if there was a superhero in Big City, then suddenly their numbers would go way, way up, too. And so they was, it's twofold. And there's other things that are going on in the story, but I'm going to stop talking and let you talk about anything I didn't cover before we get into the nitty gritty of that. Okay, I don't know if this counts as nitty gritty or not, but one thing we didn't mention, and you mentioned the, who was it that time was it time to? Oh, Shyler Lee. Okay, you mentioned Shyler Lee. I'm not one of those guys that can, you know, like, remember Shyler Lee's name, for example, like yeah. you can, but I, even I recognized Pa Danvers when I saw him come walking up, and I went, "Oh my gosh!" Because that was played by Dean Kane, who was Superman in Lois and Clark. And you said, which this is some uh, one that I didn't notice, I didn't realize, Ma Danvers is played by Helen Slater, who was Supergirl in the movie. In the 1980s version of the film, Supergirl yeah. terrible uh, schlock fest, but I've always had affection for Helen Slater. Yeah, and and, the, and she, I thought she was wonderful. She looked exactly like comic Supergirl. Yeah, she was good. She was at just Supergirl. beautiful and young. And it wasn't her fault that the movie was right. Terrible. It just it was really a good casting choice, and you know the budget got slashed on that movie, and Christopher Reeve dropped out of it at the last moment, and. They're like, well, let's go ahead and we'll cut out all the parts that had substance and we'll just make do with what we got. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was that badly made. Um, and so it's not its fault. But um, anyway, yeah, the, she, those those two I cameoed. I don't even know if they had a line in the pilot. I don't think they did. Yeah, you just saw them. And, and as she said, and this is the one thing that they kept doing throughout the show, she said, oh, my cousin... The big guy, or they they would always refer to Superman by anything but, as you said, the S word. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, but I think the S word means not Superman. Oh, bull um, Superman, come on. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, I, I, we can talk about it later if you want to, but I feel it was legal uh, reasonings. You know, the, the end credits of the show rolled, and maybe you didn't see the end credits because you saw bootleg, but... It I said Supergirl, produced under special license from the estate of Joel Siegel and Jerry Schuster. And I was just like, special license? What the crap? And it, it all comes from that lawsuit where Warner Brothers said, Superboy and Superman are not the same characters, so we don't have to pay you and all that. And that ended up coming back to bite them. And uh, so they nearly lost the rights, well, to all the Superboy stuff, which is, you know. Ma and Pa Kent and Smallville and Lana Lang and you know all the stuff that was invented for Superboy rather than Superman uh, but anyway it had special arrangement at the end and I feel like okay they, they were somehow sort of trying to worm their way around the fact that they couldn't um, either because of Warner Brothers movies who are destroying Superman right now or somebody else having a license to do a Superman show they just had to get around it. So they never actually say his name. They never actually show his face. And I, uh, But I thought it still worked. I yeah. knew who it was. You knew who it was. It worked just fine. It was slightly weird where you're just like, oh, that's weird. Yeah. I wonder what's going on there. But it wasn't like it threw you out of the story or you're just like, oh, I'm not watching this now. F you. Well, yeah, there was a moment when he like looks at her and the sun is directly behind his head. So it eclipses his, you know, it's like just you 
sorry, where his face is, you sort of just see the, the lens flare or whatever. And, and I thought, actually, that took a little bit of effort to do that, to hide his face in that way. It was kind of cute and, and kind of clever. And, and I don't know, it may also be, shamefully enough, and it, it, they just don't want to pay the estate. And if the show is a spectacular hit, then they'll cast somebody to be Superman and he'll come in onto the show. But we'll, that's not going to happen, so. <laughs> it's not going to be a hit? You never it's know. It's on the wrong channel. Well, that doesn't mean it's not going to okay. find its way to the right one. Like we were no, no, you're before. right. I mean, way more people watch CBS than watch all the other networks. So it's possible that there'll be some, what do you call it? Not drizzle down or carry through or some splash damage, whatever you call it. Where trickle down economics? Trickle down from all the people <laughs> that watch Big Bang Theory or, or CSI or Blue Bloods or any of those shows that aren't made for me maybe they'll start watching it just from promos or yeah i've seen a lot of commercials for it and uh when is it coming out i don't think it's on yesterday until... oh yeah like, <laughs> it was on yesterday i don't think this airs until october okay so yeah i mean it's a long way from october when we're recording this uh i mean it's it was yesterday that we recorded this but <laughs> well, i've seen show a lot aired yesterday i've seen a lot of commercials for this you know, leading up to way before its actual premiere, I've seen a lot of commercials. So they're trying to get people interested in it. I think the show looks cheap as hell, but it's obviously not. It's got to cost a fortune to do flying effects and to do a city that doesn't exist and to do spaceships and Phantom Zone powers and all that happy crappy and a, and, and a terrible plane crash sequence that still looked better than the one in Air Force One. Uh, it's got to cost a fortune to do all that stuff. And so, of course, they've got all these commercials and stuff. They, they want to make their money back. They want a lot of people to watch it. Nobody makes a show, unless it's Fox, that they want to fail. <laughs> so, I don't know. A city that doesn't exist, all you got to do is shoot in Toronto for that. Oh, you bet. Wait, I don't understand. It's where they shoot every city. I don't know what it is. Uh, anyways, so... Linda Danvers. Linda Carazorel. She's a peon at this newspaper. Uh, but she's like the personal assistant peon of the head of the newspaper, which is, I guess, not so much of a peon. <laughs> because a real peon would just be in the mailroom that no one knows about. Um, I guess, but maybe she's got the position that nobody else wants. Where you have to have absolutely no backbone and absolutely no self-esteem. Yep. To, to, to do this and, and, and maybe she goes through one of these every other week like the job yeah it does had. seem like that because it seems like she's on the verge of firing her all through the first show if she says anything like if she contradicts her or whatever then all of a sudden she'll, oh well I don't need you around you're fired and also a new arrival at their newspaper is James Olson not Jimmy this guy is James now Jimmy Olsen that I know from Superman and I obviously I'm not uh, I don't read all the comics I'm not a huge Superman fan I've seen I've read some comics I've seen obviously all the movies and Jimmy Olsen is a goober he is <laughs> not a cool guy he's got generally this really goofy looking red hair it's like really curly out of control, you know, un uncontrollable okay, hair. You're getting mean. The the freckles and all that stuff, and he's really socially kind of he, he doesn't have it going on. Uh, they've replaced him with James Olson. Um, James Olson. I guess this is supposed to be the older Jimmy Olson now or something. He is like a Pulitzer Prize. I mean, he has a photograph of Superman that won him like a Pulitzer or can you win a Pulitzer just for a photograph? Yeah, he did. I don't know if you can, but he did. Okay, so he's the Pulitzer Prize winning photographer from, and he is so different than what I think of as Jimmy Olsen. I mean, obviously he's a black guy, which, uh, you know, they, they do a lot of that stuff these days where we're just, you know, trading things around. And I'm okay with that, but I want a goober black dude playing Jimmy Olsen I don't want this guy is so smooth and awesome and I think they it, I don't know if they're planning this but it seems like this guy's gonna be like romantic 
uh, interest number one. Oh, yes, obviously. But now you were an athlete in high school. Did you ever have arms or a six-pack like this guy? Oh, hell no. Okay. I mean, I... this guy is built like, well, like the the, the S-word, the guy we're not supposed right. to say the name of. I, he took off his shirt on the panel. At, <laughs> oh, I, really? I, no joke. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I guess every year there's a tradition of the buffest guy on the arrow panel or, or oh, yeah. whatever to, to lift up his shirt and show off his abs if the girls will, and, and the gay men in the audience, will cheer loud enough. And this year, they had all decided it was, it was this guy. And so he lifted it up, his... and yeah, he looked like, I don't know, he should be fighting Apollo Creed for, right. the, fight, for the darn heavyweight championship of the world. His name is Mekad Brooks. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce his first name. It's M-E-H-C-A-D. Okay, well... Um, but yeah, he, yeah, he does. I mean, he looks like Kobe Bryant or something. Yes, there you go. That's... He just, you know, finished winning the game, winning the NBA championship for the Lakers. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I got to go to my job. I'm a photographer, Pulitzer Prize winning photographer for the, cause yeah, he is so smooth and uh, it's not what I think of as Jimmy Olsen, which, you know, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm not the, let, let me interrupt just for a minute. Jimmy Olsen was created. As a ch- a young person could associate with this he was guy, Robin basically. He, he for was Superman. he was the teen sidekick of Superman, for a young boy to be the entry level character. We're not Superman. We don't save the universe and all that stuff, but we can associate. We can relate to Jimmy Olsen, who's Superman's best bud, who's the guy to idolize. Yeah, Superman, who's the guy who who just you know he's he gets in danger and Superman helps him out, and we all wish. That we had somebody like that that we it, could that would help us when we're in trouble. Isn't there? A, I mean, the name of the comic book that they made of him is called Superman's Pal, Jimmy Olsen. Isn't Excellent it? Excellent memory, <laughs> sir. Yes, and every one of those covers here. If you, if you, if in the world of, that you're listening to this in, there is no internet, then you don't know. But every cover of Superman's Pal, Jimmy Olsen, is hilarious. <laughs> if you want to go look at those, you'll just be delighted. And each ep- issue is Jimmy trying to impress Superman, trying to help Superman in a way, and it always backfires, puts Superman in trouble, or gives Superman's enemy the, the, <laughs> the tool they need to almost destroy him and stuff like that. And so they'll always put this awkward, embarrassing, humiliating, dangerous moment on every cover. And it's only eclipsed by Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, which was created during the exact same time in the Silver Age of comics. Except for in those, she's always trying to prove that Clark Kent is Superman and will inadvertently either almost get herself killed or almost get Superman killed. And they'll show that on the cover of every issue of some awful thing that Lois Lane does to just destroy <laughs> the life of Superman. And it's it's hilarity, man. I would like a book that just has these covers in it. <laughs> They're so, so fun. Anyhow, uh, I, I apologize for that little diatribe. But that's what Jimmy Olsen is. I like Jimmy Olsen because he represents that innocence of a, the young person that I once was, of, of wishing that I knew Superman, wishing that I had somebody in my life that could save me whenever the bullies came or whenever, you know, I, I couldn't run fast enough or, or, you know, whatever it is. Whenever I got down, here's a guy who can make me a snow cone from the polar ice cap or whatever. And, and, you know, he's my good friend and he can do all the things that I can't do. I love that idea. There might be a segment of the audience that is saying, oh, you know, I, I see what niche this fills. Um, and, and anyway, that's that's why I like Jimmy Olsen. But the Jim, James Olsen on Supergirl, the television series, he don't need none of that bull Superman. <laughs> he, uh, he He's making it happen on his own. Yeah, he's he's slick and awesome and studly and everything. And I maybe it's like we're saying, hey, you know, Jimmy Olsen may have been a goofball when he was younger, but he grew up to be Kobe Bryant. So you know, you can't be, you know, just it's it's like those it gets better like YouTube videos or whatever where they're making them to try and keep people who who want to kill themselves because of how bad everything is in college and you know you're young high school high school oh sorry that's what i meant high school you're a young gay man and you you don't know what you're doing and 
it seems like it'll never get better, but they're saying, hey, it gets better. Look, I mean, look, Jimmy Olsen became Kobe Bryant. So, you know, you this could be in store for you. Maybe that's what they're going for. Doesn't seem like those no. one could become the other. They're going for the target demographic. And right. this is a, a very attractive studly dude or whatever that we that you as the viewer have to just hope and pray that Kara gets together with oh God, if they would only kiss my life would mean something and so there's that is there another character you want to introduce or do you want me to? uh there is the friend that's like her pal and he works at the uh the newspaper as well and they're they're tight which seems it's maybe her BFF, the, right? Yeah, it's her BFF. I know where you're going, and go right ahead. Well, I, I, I wasn't going there. I was just gonna oh. say that that seems kind of weird that she can have a BFF at the place if she's in that position that she's, you know, in danger of being fired at any second. And this woman probably has a new assistant every two weeks, which maybe that's not the case. I don't know. Maybe she's been her assistant for a year. He seems gay. Okay, thank you. That's... But also, he is in love with her, right? He's like the third. The... Have we had this conversation? I don't or did think you just so. watch the show and you got this? Yeah, that's what okay. I, I got it from the show. He seems like a gay dude. He seems like, again, going back to like Ugly Betty, I'm pretty sure Ugly Betty had friends at their magazine or whatever the heck they worked at that were, you know, they were the best friends. But these ones were obviously gay, which this guy seems like. But also, he is obviously in love with linda and he wants to go out with her he wants to go on a date with her he wants he to... wants to do all the uh, teenage girly non-threatening things that would happen in a show like this yeah but here's the thing and if it is late 2015 and i turn out to be wrong you feel free to actually comment for once on the show and tell me how <laughs> wrong i am uh, this is the gay best friend and there were certain people that saw the pilot when they edited it together and said he's not going to be the gay best friend anymore he's just going to be a straight best friend and s changes were made so that they could keep all the footage that they had but now he is a second love interest who has a, a, a very strong cut crush on him and her sorry freudian there and the i have a little bit more evidence than just i saw the show and this is what happened from what the actor who plays this character said on the panel but all you have to do is watch the scene where he makes her the superman super girl costume i almost said the s word there i apologize yeah how it's dare a family you? show a he sewed her a costume but two she comes out in a fudge and thong and a halter top for the very first costume that he made if this was not her gay best friend who in the world would come out in their underwear to model this for, for a straight guy? No one would do this, sir. No one. Yeah. Good day, sir. <laughs> so as the show continues, we will see probably more of the love triangle thing. And it's like, Who's, who do you hope ends up with Kara? And all Are that. you with Team James or Team... Is it Toby? Is it really Toby? I don't know if it's Toby. That guy that's doesn't look That's such a terrible right, but... name for... I mean, maybe for a gay best friend, that's that's the name Toby. But for the third leg of the love triangle, they've got to come up with a better name for that. But anyway, on the panel, he talked about how, yeah, they're good friends, but he's super in love with her and she barely can pick up on it. And I, I dude, I can understand that. The whole world would be super in love with this girl. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. He is the one person that she tells that she comes out of, no you don't say that that she shows that she is super girl that she can do all these things too so he's the one confidant at the he's not super Daily girl's Planet. pal he's super, super girl's, girl's pal, pal. Yes. that's not jimmy olsen it's toby mcguire a super girl's gal pal anyway toby. i understand the desire to create a, a third wheel so that you could get the debate of who do you want him to end up with. But at the same time, in like defense of Greg Berlanti, who is homosexual, why can't we have a, a homosexual character on a show like this? 
Anyway, I don't know. Maybe there's just less story possibilities when there's no love triangle that you can work into it. Right, or but something. you can create a, a love triangle. Yeah, you can even bring in like an angel type, you know, almost villain that walks the from that's from the Phantom Zone that she could be super attracted to. Plus, he actually has the powers that she has. In fact, if they don't do this, I guess I will write for the show because that that is a given. Of course, you want to come up with somebody. And it's like. Yeah, this is the only person besides your cousin who could put a baby in you, honey. Okay, well, we don't want to talk about that. Except for the fact that she's supposed to be fucking darn 24 years old, which I felt like was a huge mistake when they came out with Barry Allen being 24 years old. I was like, are you kidding me? He just graduated high school. He's probably smart, so he's 17 and he's out of high school. And you said, well, he wouldn't be a forensic yeah, scientist if he were 17. To. But they shouldn't have cast a 17-year-old then. <laughs> but... Same thing with this, you know, her name's Supergirl for a reason. She should have been a dang teenager. And then you could deal with all the high school stuff, all the coming into my own stuff, all the puberty of where, oh, I, I, I have these feelings for this guy, but I don't know if I should act on him stuff, which they'll still do. They didn't but it just works for better her for her life, life to, to be, be over. It's the problem. <laughs> anyway, I will shut up just for a minute so you can talk. Oh, wait. Did you want to talk? I didn't have anything to break in with. Okay, so but. so just just two other things. Okay, at the very very beginning of the show, we see her mother. What, what's her name? Allura Zorel or something like that. Yes. And she puts baby Kara in the the spaceship, and you're the last hope for Krypton. And anyway, it shoots him uh, shoots her out into space, and she goes into the Phantom Zone for. 13 years or something like that for a period of years and then the ship manages to burst out of the phantom zone but it i believe it takes a phantom zone ship with it providing a bunch of super powered villains that she can fight throughout the series and you know what i think this is a great idea a very smart idea although they didn't have to be busted out by Kara, and they didn't have to have been imprisoned by Kara's mother but i'm okay with that because it gives motivation Besides just the obvious motivation of these are bad people or they wouldn't have been in, in prison in the first place. But uh, there is a Phantom Zone bad guy, right? That's the villain in this episode that she she fights. Mm -hmm. She fights and he beats her at first and then she has to go back and fight him again and win this time. And, and, and yeah, that's, I thought all that stuff worked fine. Then at the end, they show who the big bad is. And there's this big bad villain that's going to be our recurring enemy for the rest of the series. And it's the identical twin sister of Allura Zorel. So it's the, the it is her evil aunt who escaped the destruction of Krypton and is played by the same actress. So that's what see, I didn't understand that. They, we see her and I was just like, Okay, so is that her who is that? And I think we they didn't say somehow this is her aunt or something like there's mom's sister. She says, Oh, my sister put us here or something. I can't remember what happened quite at the end but yeah it was just like what who is this you sound very depressed by that is it the last son of krypton thing is a complete bs because there's a gazillion people that got away from krypton well but you know what that's that's how it always has been there's an entire city from krypton that has survived for 70 years of comics continuity and yet Superman is still the last son of Krypton. Sorry about the S word. It's fine. You have to do this stuff so that there'll be people that he can fight, that you know can stand up to him. And, and there's just many, many story opportunities if there are other Kryptonians out there and some are good and some are bad. And, and whoever came up with the Phantom Zone, it's a great idea. The, General Zod is just a fantastic villain, despite what was done with him in 2014. 13. 13. I, I just... I... I I felt like this actress was really, really bad. And then to find out, oh, she's going to be in every episode, I was like, oh, no, guys. But that's just my opinion. And, and you know, maybe she'll get better. Or maybe there's a language barrier. I have no idea. Sometimes people get these roles and they think, well, it's based on a funny book. And so I have to camp it up and say, I wear this so I don't get run over when I'm jogging at night. <laughs> And all that. And you're just like, oh, gosh, you should. I'm sorry about spitting all over you on that. You know, it's like, oh, gosh, OK, I, I need you to rain it way back, like another city back. 
And I felt like that's the, what she thought she was doing. It's like, oh, I, I have a, a history in kabuki theater. And I was just carrying that over. So, I, I, yeah, I was bummed out about that. But it's still, it's interesting that she will have this co- connection to her mother eventually, I guess. And see, the difference between the S word and Supergirl is that she actually knew her Kryptonian parents for years. Yeah. For 13 years. And so she should have a tighter bond with these dead Kryptonians than Clark does, which almost never gets explored because nobody gives a crap about Supergirl. Nobody ever examines Supergirl or gives her the time of day. And this show, being a show that's predominantly about her and not at all about her more famous cousin, I think we'll have the chance to explore that if it doesn't get canceled. And so I think that there's possibility there. But, gosh, if there's anything else you want to talk about before I get to the last point that I really wanted to make, uh, please go ahead. What did you think of the costume? Did it work for you, the one that they made? They have the S on her chest, but it then the shield and everything is red. Then there's the yellow parts, but instead of it being all yellow in the middle, it has the blue, and it's just like outlined in yellow. I don't know if you noticed that or, or gave a crap. I didn't notice that. I, I, I did notice that. It looked like a Supergirl costume. <laughs> yeah, that that was cool. They didn't do something weird to it. It's just a normal outfit, which I like. And I thought it was kind of fun, the stuff they did, where she was going and saving things. And they're like, okay, we're going to have to do uh, something else with the cape because it got shredded. You know, just that kind of stuff is, is interesting. How this random gay best friend has, like, abilities to get that suit, whatever. He's like, this is a polymer... F- steel mesh fabric <laughs> that's bulletproof and i can just buy this at the fabric store well he's got the, the the gays if you don't mind me using that term have like an underground network and they know each other oh yeah and it's like i i know a guy who oh. can get us this kind of thing and i okay i, I, I didn't that realize cool. that was what the, the the deal was okay well that's cool then <laughs> but yeah that, that was uh, interesting but it does it, it's a really good looking outfit which is cool. Instead of them, you know, making it black or something like they did with Man of Steel, although it wasn't really black, just the film was shot in black and white, right? It was. It was. Well, didn't you send me a picture of what if Man of Steel was in color? Yeah, they took a shot from Man of Steel and they adjusted it so that his suit actually looked red, yellow, and blue. Which I thought was funny because, yeah, I, I saw that the same day that I saw another thing about Man of Steel where they showed him sitting there and you could see, you know, Lois Lane's head there and it was, you know, a little two shot of him. And he looks like he's wearing a black suit. It's so washed out and colorless. It looks just hideous. I know they're going for that dark, Gritty. dark night look or whatever, but it sucks. So yeah, that's uh, that's. It. I don't know. I think it could be good. Yeah, I guess I have to agree with you with the big bad of the show. It did seem weird and kind of campy there at the end for some reason, and maybe it was because of her. I don't. I don't remember her super overacting or seeming weird or whatever it was. But yeah, it did seem like to me. It felt like. The bits from like the Power Rangers show where the Power Rangers do their fight and then they go back and there's the big bad guy. I was like, oh no, I tried to send a big monster. And they're like wearing these crazy costumes like they're, you know, the space witch or whatever it is. And they have these just gigantic, crazy costumes on these bad guys. I'm like we need to send a new monster and make it giant. That's what it felt like that bit there where I... And I think that really kind of tanked, because by the time it was done, I was just like, eh, I don't know if I like that or not. It tainted everything else for me for some reason. It's it's possible. I, I don't imagine there's much of a chance, but it's possible that they will go back and reshoot that final scene during the actual run of the show, once they have those actors in that set back, and just, you know, tell her to rein it in a little bit or whatever, make it a little more subtle. I don't know if they will or not, but... It's a possibility. And and even if they don't, it, there's always more episodes down the line where they can develop that character a little more and they can say, okay, I felt like maybe it was a little hammy. Let's, what, what can we do to add a little bit of realism to this show? And 
that is something that they said on the panel that really stuck with me is when they set out to do this show, they said, well, what kind of tone do we want this to have? And they all agreed the Richard Donner Superman is the tone that they wanted to have. And before they showed the pilot, they brought all the cast out and, you know, we did a bunch of Q&A and stuff. And they showed a sizzle reel, as they call it, you know, it's just like a few <laughs> minutes of like the most spectacular scenes or whatever, you know, just to get people talking. And I thought it looked awful. It was my first glimpse at the show, except for that picture that everybody saw of her in the suit. And I was just like, oh, no, this look because every special effect looked terrible. And you know what? It might have been something that they showed to investors or whatever before the pilot was even done uh-huh. you know it's just like okay this is the show we're working on so far you know we've been shooting for two weeks and this is what we have but it looked so gaudy and like brightly lit and really bad cg and stuff like every time she flew she was replaced by a not Cartoon. a pixelated but a, yeah very <laughs> obviously cg character and all that and so i was just like oh cow this looks really really dumb uh but then they showed the the show and I was won over. And the thing that won me over was this girl, Melissa Benoist. Is that her name? Yes. She plays Kara, or Linda Danvers. And I just loved the hell out of this girl. I, I, I felt like she was genuine. She seemed decent, like down to her core or whatever. And she had a burning desire that we all have had to be more than what she is. To do more, to make a difference, to stand out and all that. And suddenly I was just like, wow, this is speaking to the 13-year-old girl in me. <laughs> and when she was bumbling Clark Kent, and that's what Linda Danvers was, I just thought she was cute as all get out. And, you know, can you get the door, please? Excuse me. Oh, oh, never mind. All that stuff. I was just like, oh, gosh, this is what I love about Clark Kent. <laughs> it's when he's the most powerful man in the universe acting like this nothing, this doormat kind of character. I was just, oh, my gosh, he won me over. And I felt when she decided she could make a difference and she could save all these lives and to heck with hiding in, in the shadow of her cousin or hiding who she really was, that that got the spirit of Superman better than Man of Steel did. That is what Superman is. I have the power to help people. And if I don't help people, I don't deserve to have this power. Plus, she enjoyed it when she did it. So it's like these two aspects of a character that just made me smile and made me like her. And it's like, wow, well done. And they could have gone any other way and they could have had her be a real bitter character or a ball buster or whatever. And, and it's like, no, we reserved that for the sister. Yeah, I'll have to admit that the sister, after the first time that she goes out, she saves the plane, and her sister was on the plane, so she saves her sister's life. Her sister comes back and goes, "What did you? What are you doing? Why would you reveal yourself and save my life? I'm mad at you for saving my life. You shouldn't have done that." That was the one scene where I was just like, "What in the hell? This is Man of Steel here. This is." This doesn't make any sense. It doesn't I, matter who she is. She's the head of S.W.O.R.D. or whatever the crap their their yeah. organization is called. I'm sorry. Nobody complains about having their life saved. Nobody goes to that person and says, Damn you for saving my life. You didn't save my life. You ruined my death. <laughs> uh, yeah, I loathed the sister. And I would be I would be blown away if everybody didn't feel the same way. Although there is a moment afterward where she explains her motivation and she says, you don't know what it was like growing up with this sister that could do all this stuff and that always was perfect. And mom mom, and dad paid so much more attention to you that I was the real daughter and I was there first. And then you became the favorite because you were great and perfect and you could fly and you could make Eve with your eyes. And unless you were a green object around, you were always so powerful and you're never going to die and you're so pretty. And this is not a lie. Your Kryptonian DNA ensured that you never got pimples. That is a line from the pilot. <laughs> and I thought, wow, A, I mean, it makes her even more unlikable. But I understand that. There is a actual motivation 
for why Kara would be like, oh, I don't want to overshadow my sister. I love my sister. I'm not going to be special. I'm not going to be powerful. I'm going to be a doormat. And that shows where the basis for the Linda Danvers persona came from. It still didn't make me like the sister. But I understood and I thought, okay, I think that that's an adequate explanation. But yeah, still, yeah, she is in some kind of paramilitary x files type of organization that's on Earth to prevent us from being destroyed by aliens and all that stuff. Whereas you got a guy in the next city who's on Earth to prevent us being destroyed by aliens. Uh, and yeah, she's high up in this in the ranks or whatever, I guess. Or maybe she's going to be fired and then she gets unfired because Kara says, I'll only work with my sister. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like any of that stuff worked. But yes, the nadir of the show was when Kara saved all those lives and the sister was waiting for her at the apartment to bitch her out for how dare you be so irresponsible or whatever. I mean, it is wow. The spirit of Kevin Costner Pocant reaches that far. <laughs> yeah, I have to say I really dislike that scene. And all I could do is say, what the hell? This makes no sense at all. And I guess they try and, you know, show you. Oh, no, it makes sense because she's trying to protect her from being grabbed by this organization that she works for. Oh, see, that I hadn't even considered. You're right. But you see, it made no sense to me because there is a savior of the planet, just another city over, that everyone adores and everybody loves, everybody respects, and has shown that aliens can be trustworthy and all that stuff. It didn't occur to me that maybe... The S word has tons of bad guys or whatever that these guys try and destroy before they come to destroy our planet. Or I, I don't know. In a world where there is a Superman, but there isn't a Superman, an organization like that, you got to wonder. It's like, well, what is their attitude on Superman? And what, you know what I mean? It's just, does Superman never come to, what did we call it, big city? <laughs> See, the thing is, he can be everywhere at once. He is God, right? Why does he not fly over to Big City and say, oh, you saved that plane. Well done. I, you know, I would have done it, but you did it. Well done. It, let, let me teach well, you how to use your powers. I actually on my way, but then I saw you, so I, I just kind of hung back for a sec just to make sure it was okay. Yeah, I mean, it's the same problem that we always say about all those Marvel movies. It's like, oh, yeah, let's call the Avengers because why the hell wouldn't we? <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I mean, obviously, you can't always call the Avengers, or maybe they're maybe Superman's busy because Lex Luthor's doing something at the same time. He, I mean, they would do that with the the Justice League cartoon. They would do that sometimes. They come up with an excuse for or, Superman yeah, not to be there. They would just say, "Hey, Bat, uh, Batman says he's busy. He's not coming." Because Batman, a he's kind of an a hole. Batman <laughs> just likes to just say, "No, f you. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm on your team." But don't expect me to just come running every time, okay? Because I'm my own man here. <laughs> um, so, you know, if they throw something like that out, uh, that I guess that, that works. But, yeah, I mean, that is always kind of the thing that's right there. It's like, sh sure, Supergirl did this thing, but she's a kid. She's not good at that. I mean, Superman's right there, and he can fly around the world so fast that it will turn in reverse and turn back time. So obviously he could just fly over to this city that's like just down the street and save this plane. He could fly all over the whole world if he wanted to and do an awful lot of good. Why didn't he come and help? Just because contractual obligation says we can't say his name? So that's something that they'll come up against, and maybe they'll that'll change. Maybe they'll cast somebody, like you were saying, or whatever. Well, yeah, at this point, we don't know how involved with the Superman universe this show is going to be, or how involved with the rest of the DC universe this show is going to be. It'll be fun if they say, okay, well, let's introduce X, you know, this character that's from, that's obviously a Superman villain rather than a Supergirl villain. And all that, and and I don't think they've introduced Kryptonite yet, and it'll be fun to see what Kryptonite does to this girl, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, the whole point I wanted to make was that I I realized that the show wasn't for me. I sh I shouldn't watch it. I'm always going to get angry by the forced love triangle and the silliness and the you know where we're, we're going to change this and we're going to introduce this ethnicity or this whatever it is just so that we can 
click a box and, and, and you know, which is just what happens when you make a show that's trying to draw the, the broadest audience or trying to get the girls to talk about it the next day on social media and stuff. I mean, you know, that's, that's part of making television today, unless you're watching Blue Bloods or one of those shows that's made for the elderly, where I don't imagine that they put up a Twitter handle in the middle of the show while you're watching it. I'm sure you've seen that before where you're just like, oh my gosh, really? You're just putting that up? Like if you ever watch... They gave you the hashtag yeah, that hashtag, you're supposed that's to comment about the show with. And it's not just the show. It's just like this plot thread of the show has its own hashtag because we want you to talk about it and stuff. And oh gosh, I hate that stuff. But I liked the girl. I thought the girl was just great. Was really likable, really pretty. She had dyed her hair blonde. I don't know if you see that in the pilot, but I was just like, wow, thank you guys for dyeing her hair blonde. I don't know why it matters that Kara's hair is blonde, but it's just that's what the character was in the comics. And that they would take that step to do that makes me feel like, well, because that's what she looks like. We, we want to honor that. We like the history mm-hmm. instead of are ashamed of the history. And Anyhow, that, that, that stuff is, is interesting. I don't know that I'm going to continue to watch it because there's just so many shows. But if my cousin really wants to watch it or my nephews or something like that, I, I'll give it a chance. Yeah. I didn't dislike the show. I didn't hate the show or anything like that. I'm glad that I watched it. And watching it with a big crowd, you could see, you know, the things that they really liked and the things that, you know, when they'd laugh and stuff like that. And I thought that that was neat. But yeah, what I came across with most is, that, you know, it rests on this girl's shoulders. And they, I think they found a great Karazari. Yeah, they've got somebody that can probably hold it up. You know, I heard tell, and maybe you saw something about this in the panel with the whole DC universe, but I heard tell that they were thinking about bringing Superman in uh, with Arrow and all those guys in some kind of a you know cameo appearance, and he would be played by the guy that played him in Smallville. Oh, what a great idea. That's really good. No, I'm not being sarcastic. I know I've, I've lost the ability to hide when I'm being sarcastic. Oh, wait. Is that what I'm... <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. I, I was a new character that I should develop for the show. That's uh, that's completely serious man, but he always sounds like he's being sarcastic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd heard that they were going to bring Tom Welling in. I, I don't think that that has happened. They talked about all sorts of stuff they're going to bring in on Arrow and characters they're bringing in on Arrow and characters they're bringing in on Flash and stuff, but they, they didn't say anything about Tom Welling, Superman. And it may be that the same reason that they don't refer to it, him in Supergirl is the same reason they haven't been able to do it. I, you know, Warner Brothers makes a lot of money from these Superman movies, and so maybe they're a little bit overprotective about their their properties. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, just, I had heard that in one of those uh internet rumor mill things i think i'll probably continue watching the show it, it seems to me like i mean with flash and agents of shield you know me and my kids get together and we watch these shows together and i get the feeling that this one may just you know fit in with all the rest of them and we'll kind of watch all of them as we go well and you have two daughters too yeah and it will be interesting to see the show through their eyes because that's the target demographic and they may respond to stuff that you wouldn't even think to respond to or you know in the same way that they haven't seen every cliche yet right they haven't there are certain things plot twists and stuff that they have not yet encountered because they haven't watched the hundreds of episodes of tv that you have and for somebody to go oh when you're like, oh, well, you didn't see that coming? When I'm rolling my eyes and saying, oh, I saw that like five different times on Gilligan's Island. Well, when you say, honey, <laughs> we didn't see the body. Of course he's not dead. And she's like, but they said he was, you know, that kind of thing. Every kid has to see that for the first time. And maybe it's on a Power Rangers episode. With but- a... With a- a comic book movie it doesn't matter even if you do see the body <laughs> they still come back i'm sure i'm pretty sure that it will probably wind up being one that we watch i don't know the kids didn't seem amazing i watched the first one with uh, oh, you all did. three of my kids they didn't seem like a i think all of them had already watched it before me oh okay. so 
that might be one reason why they weren't all excited. But also, yeah, I mean, after it was over, they're just like, meh, okay, I'm going to bed, see ya. So I don't know how excited they are about watching more of these. They really like Flash. One of my daughters went back and watched like every episode of Arrow that was available on Netflix, which I think is two full seasons worth of episodes. She basically watched them back to back in the space of like two days. She didn't even, she had to like not blink for two days just to be able to accomplish this feat. Um, so they're really kind of into those things right now. So I think it'll be pretty likely that I'll see it. And uh, did they watch Agent Carter with you, or did you watch that by yourself? They did. No, we watched Agent Carter while Agent Shield, Agents of Shield, was on uh, hiatus or whatever in between seas half seasons. And uh, yeah, I mean they're excited for that to come come back when it does. And when I told them that it had been re-upped, they're like, "Oh, well, good, cool. I can't wait." Um, so. So yeah, I mean, it, it, we, we've kind of developed a bunch of shows like that that we watch uh, together. And we're it's it's weird. I, I'm, I'm assuming we'll get back to it when they all come back. Because all summer long, we haven't really watched very many things together. Whereas during the year, like every Sunday afternoon, we would sit down. And sometimes we would watch show after show because we would, you know, things would come up and we'd miss it for a couple weeks or something. And we would sit down and watch all three episodes that we missed and then watch you know all three episodes of the other show and uh, often my kids were going to school on monday morning with a lot less sleep than they should have had <laughs> because we stayed up way later than we should have but yeah i'm excited to add it I, I i think it'll be cool i like superman i like supergirl i want my daughter the older of the two she likes batman a lot she has batman shirts she has a batman poster on her door she had a pair of batman leggings that she got where it just had bat symbols all over oh, them okay. and then those got old and wore out and she wanted to get another pair like it and couldn't find it so she actually wound up buying a pair of boys sweatpants uh with batman on them which they're not cut to be flattering and they t <laughs> actually look terrible on her but she doesn't wear them out they're just like for pajamas or whatever so but she just she really likes batman and she thinks batman's the coolest and she thinks superman is lame and so i would like her to see a good superman you know what i mean not to see man of steel but to see a superman who isn't lame see the superman that i think is rad which you know, like you were saying, this this uh, Supergirl is a lot like that. The bumbling, goofy kind of Clark Kent on one side, yet, you know, absolutely awesome Superman on the other side. I love that, you know, the Richard Donner Superman, the tone they're going for. I hope they achieve it, and I want my kids to be introduced to it so that they, they get that. Um, I think it, it, it'll be neat. Well, yeah, you let me know how the show goes um, because, yeah, if after like the third or fourth episode you say, hey, dude, you got to watch it. I will watch it. I trust your opinion. Yeah, and the same with you guys. If if, if you saw something that, that we didn't see or you liked something that we didn't like, uh, I, we didn't really talk about Calista Flarkhart's character being Perry White or being J. Jonah Jameson, but I thought that was fine. And I was like, in so many ways, the show is a Superman show just with the genders reversed. And that doesn't really bother me. It's fine. If you guys can't do a faithful Superman show, I'll watch this. I agree. And uh, I'm all for it. So I, I hope it manages to be good. And I hope it manages to get the opportunity to be good. Because, you know, sometimes they, it takes a while for a TV show to find its footing and to really get going a lot of times you'll watch early episodes. Like, for example, I mean, you always talk about how great Buffy the Vampire Slayer was and all this stuff. And you loaned me season one of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I watched it. And I'm just like, yeah, I guess it's got its moments. Yeah, and I've argued with lots of people. There's like, Buffy was great from the very beginning. And yeah, I don't think a single episode in season one is great. But 
it still spoke to enough people that got a second season yeah, and all they, that stuff. But yeah, they it, gave Buffy it a chance. becomes great. It just took them a little while to figure out what worked and what didn't work and, and what... I mean, also just the, the budget being so low in that first season, you really feel it. And mm-hmm. Anyway, it just... Uh, yeah, I, I feel bad that you never got a chance to see Buffy when it soared. Well, I still... We'll get around to it someday, I'm sure. That That's one of those things. Buffy got the chance to get there. There's a lot of other shows, I mean, like Firefly, for example, and many others like it, that never got their chance to actually get their feet under them. And uh, sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, this show is just getting great, and pfft, it's gone because nobody believed in it enough to, to, to let it get there. In this day and age, that just seems like that's the thing. You know, you give a show, shoot, sometimes it's only a few episodes, and then they're gone. I hope this one isn't treated that way, but since it's on such a big network, it may be in for trouble. And if it is, you know, we talked about it, it's probably, maybe it's a fantasy, I don't know, but I hope that CW jumps in and saves it. Um, but at a certain point, you know, CW might be stretching itself too thin. Uh, how many superhero related shows can they have they've now got three that they're planning on their own network uh if they have to grab supergirl as well that will give them four and it's you know how far do you go where before you're just we're the superhero network they won't have room for any you know pretty little liars or whatever i don't know what they show on that where does pretty little liars show that's abc they, oh, they okay. always show uh, they, they are the supernatural channel that shows vampire diaries and supernatural and the originals and i zombie and you know it's <laughs> like everyone i i know it sounds like i'm making these shows up they, they exist <laughs> well if that's what they are then maybe they can just work their superheroes right on in with it and and that's all cool and good seems like you know, we say the target audience for this is the 14-year-old girl. Did you disagree? Do you not feel that? Oh, no, I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying 14-year-old girls these days love superheroes. You know, it's it, things have changed from when you and I were younger and 14-year-old girls saw you wearing a Wolverine t-shirt and they're like, oh, you're one of those dorks, aren't you? Um, nowadays, they're like, oh, nice Wolverine. Oh, I love Wolverine. My favorite is Deadpool. I love when he fights Deadpool and start pulling out crap that girls should, you know, <laughs> they shouldn't know. I mean, that's things that I shouldn't know. know. Me and you are just like, what? You know, but my daughter <laughs> knows all that crap. And I've told you, I think, even about this before where my brother in law super loves DC and he's got three daughters. And they all know DC characters inside and out. And they know, you know, just the characters that I'm just like, oh my, how does a six-year-old girl know who this is? And they know them all way beyond what I know, just because I'm not that into DC. Um, you know, I mean, they, they know who Dr. Light is and crap like that. Well, hopefully this show will speak to them in the same way that Christopher Reeve spoke to us. I wanted to be that. I wanted to, I wanted to be his pal. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I, uh, you tied the towel around your neck and uh, went we, and jumped off of the swing set and broke your arm. We all did. <laughs> and it's something that I that I revere. I love that. And I'm hoping that this speaks to girls in the exact same way, and they will feel that they want to be somebody who does right because it's right because they can. I, I, I thought that that was refreshing in this world that we live in, too. It's like, wow, well done, show. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I'll leave on that note. Yeah, good luck, Supergirl. We hope to see you around for a while. And we hope to see you guys back next time on the next episode of That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rashad Field. And this looks like a job for the S word. <laughs> That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. Trickle-down economics? Trickle-down from the m****s that watch Big Bang Theory and and all of the (laughs) Darwin's Waiting Room people that watch Blue Bloods and the CSIs. They, uh...
Oh gosh, I gotta re rephrase all that, don't I? Uh <laughs> okay, since you're looking that thing up, tell the listener what you did to the girl in the parking lot. What? Which, which yes, sounds worse when I put it that way. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to add this on to the show or? Yeah. Okay. All right. So today we were just walking out of Walmart right before we came to record. The show had, shoot, it must have just aired, right? Because it was like nine o'clock and I, I'm guessing it aired at eight. And this girl was sitting on the bumper of a car. I would say she's wearing what? Like black leggings. And then she had on blue Supergirl, Superman shirt. And she had blonde hair, long, blonde, curly, or wavy, I guess it might be the better name for it, hair. <laughs> I saw her sitting there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay, what time is it? Because I wanted to know where the show had actually aired or not. And he's like, Rish is like, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's 9.02. It's like, okay. So we walked up to this girl, and I pointed at her, and I said, great job on the show. I loved it. And she, how did she, did she like... She, she like, smiled, smiled and nodded, and kind but, of laughed but I don't know if she got the joke or not. It yeah. depends on whether she watched that show or not. And but you were saying she, probably a 50% chance that If she she's dressed it. as Supergirl on the night that Supergirl aired, plus she was the in that target audience. But I don't know. Nobody really watches. Uh, nobody young watches TV when, there's, when it's on, right? Right. So Nobody watches it except for when it's on Netflix or at least Hulu. Well, yeah, everybody has a DVR, and they can just uh, watch it whenever they want to. But if you're old, yes, you have to watch something when it airs. So, yeah, that's what we did before we came to record. The end. Anyway, sorry. 